Welcome to the Wave Contact Lens System online training series. In this video, we're going to go over an introduction to the Wave display screen and some of the features here. In further videos, we'll get into designing lenses and what some of the control points and views will actually do for your lens designs. So here we have a Wave lens open, and we'll start at the upper left screen. We have Wave dash and then a file name. The .wl3 in this case indicates it's the third lens based under topography. If we had four, five, or six lenses under there, we'd see .wl4, .wl5, and .wl6. So this is just a quick reference for you to know how many lenses you have in a specific lens sequence. So every time you open up a new design, rather than overwriting the previous design, you can open up a duplicate and then alter the design and you'll keep a record of your design changes that way. As we move over, we have the minimize screen, which will minimize the wave display. We have the maximize, which will make it big, and this will toggle it between this larger display and the smaller wave display. And of course, the X will close the program. Here you'll see the wave logo. If you hover over the wave logo, it will tell you the date that this was last saved. And next we have a green dot. If wave is processing a change, that dot will be red. If the software is at idle, it's at green. Then we have the About button. If you click on that, it will tell you what version of Wave you're running, as long as a description and some useful links. Print will print the screen as you see it. Save. If you click Save, it will open up the lab order form. And here's where you can enter patient information if you want to ship to the patient your account information if you want to ship to a different office. Um, you can select your delivery method. You can specify it says if it's a right or a left lens. This is where you also choose your lens material from the wide amount of choices we have. Based upon your lens material, you can select the lens color. You can choose whether or not to dot the right lens, fenestrate, or plasma tree. This is also where you specify if you want to warranty the lens or if it's an exchange. If it is an exchange, you'll need to enter a reason that it is an exchange. And on the bottom, we have message to wave. If you want to send a specific message to the wave office with this lens order, enter it here. And if you have any clinical notes, this is for your own reference. So if you edited a lens, altered it, and you want to just keep note of what you're doing, that's what this box is for. You can hit accept. PrintRx will allow you to give a printout to your patient so they can keep a record for their contact lenses, and then cancel. Next, we have this drop down. It defaults to quad view. Quad view is referring to what we're seeing in this lower right corner here. So, quad view is showing us four views all at the same time. This is the most often used when you're designing your lenses. The upper left is your front curvature view. This is the front curvature of the contact lens. Upper right is a floor, simulated fluorescein pattern. The lower left is the back curvature of the contact lens. And the lower right is the view of the cornea. If you use the drop down, you can see you can get more specific if you want to see a larger view of the imported cornea. Back curvature, back axial, front curvature, front axial. If you want to see a larger fluorescein, and it's important to note on the larger floor scene, you'll have control over how much floor scene you'll be seeing under there. And back to quad view, and then there's lens power and patient data. Patient data is a good reference. It tells you the file name, the RX that's in there. Um, if you had any over fractions in there, it would tell you that as well. And it gives you some basic information about the contact lens as well. For most design purposes, you'll be using quad view. To the right of that, you'll see the GP logo. If you hover over that, it will let you know if this lens has been ordered or not, and if it had been ordered, on what date it was ordered. And directly under that is the material that the lens is currently in. Next, we'll move into the tier layer clearance display, which is this big box in here. On the upper left, you'll see an indicator that shows 70 microns. That's the depth between the base of the cornea, which is down here, and the top of this display screen. 
if you're doing large diameter lenses and you're aiming to have more clearance, we can toggle this so we can make bigger changes and immediately have more clearance. So this is showing now 154 microns of central clearance. And as you see, if we switch back to a regular 70 micron view, everything would be off the screen. All the way across in the upper right, we have our lens diameter. It's currently set to 11.0. If you want to change lens diameter, this is a drop down. You see we can design lenses as large as 18 millimeters and as small as 8.6 millimeters. This vertical green line is the pupil reference point as imported from the topography. It's important to note for decentered pupils, the software will center it at one point in each meridian based upon an average. This light gray horizontal line represents 20 microns above the corneal plane. And on the base here, just going to move this up so we can see it better, you'll see a green line that represents the cornea if it were a straight line. This line that is now curved represents the tear layer clearance between the cornea and the back surface of the contact lens. You see we have some control points here that we can move in each direction. We can move these left or right, up or down. The red control is our optic zone. The blue control is our mid-peripheral curves. The pink control is for our edge lift. And the black control is for bevel. We'll get into more detail with those as we're doing designs. We have two tier layer modes we can design with. Axial tier layer mode, where we can right click and toggle to tangential mode. I'm going to switch back to axial here. You'll notice there are hash marks underneath here. That's a ruler. Each mark represents one millimeter from the center of the lens. We have arrows we can click to control our control points, or we can drag and drop them. Moving down, we have the spectacle refraction box. To edit or enter spectacle refraction, left click on it, and this box comes up. We can enter or change it. If you have a multifocal, this is where you can specify the style of multifocal you'd like to use. Right below that, we have our over-refraction box. Click on that to enter the over-refraction. The grayed out value is waves empirical over-refraction based on the corneal topography in relation to the spectacle RX as it's entered. If you have an over-refraction to enter, you'll do it here. If you want to add prism, there's a checkbox to add prism. And if you have subsequent over refractions, you'd enter it in the more box and hit use comp. It enters that up there. I'm going to say no at this point to not use those values as this is just a screen walkthrough. Moving over to our quad view display, the upper left has R 95%. The 95% refers to the amount of data points that are used from the topography. The R represents that this is a right contact lens. And you'll notice that it is red. When it's red, it means we're prompted to average astigmatism data from the imported topography, and we selected yes to average data. If we selected no to averaging the data, that would be blue, and we'll get into that in a little more detail later. This 100% indicates how much of the lens we're editing. So if we want to do more quadrant specific or blended editing, we can toggle between 125 and 50% by simply clicking on it. As I mentioned before, we have our front curvature view. And if we click on that, we'll see this tier layer view changes. And this is actually the front curvature of the contact lens. And this is also where we control the size of the multifocal. If we toggle over to the fluorescein view, you'll see that we have a simulated fluorescein pattern and it goes back to our tier layer clearance view. And if we alter the lens, you'll see it immediately changes the fluorescein view. 
In the lower left, we have the back curvature of the contact lens. And you can come up here and analyze the curves by clicking down. And you'll see in the upper left, it shows what curves we are at a specific point, as well as the sag value of the lens will change as well on the lower left portion of our screen. And on the lower right, we have the imported topography. Selecting the topography will actually show you the tier layer clearance view similar to the floor scene. If you wanted to reference where a curve was on the topography, you can always come up and left click and hold your cursor down. And you'll see that it puts a mark along the topography to let you know where on the topography you are in relation to the lens. In the lower left, we have K equals 755. That's the average K. And if you, if you hover over it, it will show you in diopters as well. And on the lower right, we have the corneal cylinder. These are great references to have as you're designing your lens. If we move back over to this lower left box, it shows a cross section of the contact lens, and that will change in each meridian, depending on the style of lens. We have our center thickness, which you can alter via the drop down. We have our edge thickness, which you can also edit via a drop down. The upper left is the overall lens sag. That value will change if you come up to your tier layer view or your curvature views. Left click and hold it and it will tell you the sag value at a given point of that contact lens. In the lower left we have the power and base curve. Directly underneath that we have the topo demand, which is telling us the curvature of the lens in relation to the topography. Then we have our tools box. If we click on tools, you'll see a lot of options here. We have configuration settings. So if we click that, we have some templated designs which you can save and edit as you like. So for any specific cornea, you can select a definition. It will have default values put in there. And you can edit these as you like. So if I wanted to change just a single value on this, I can do that. And I can either then save it or hit continue. And it will design the lens based upon this. Configuration settings will design a spherical or radial symmetric optic zone and the periphery of the lens will be either G-SIM, Freeform, or R-SIM, depending on how you specify it. We'll get into that in more detail later as well. Other options in here, you can enter trial lens data. If you had a trial lens you put on this patient, enter it here. It will help you calculate the initial power of the lens. You can reset to default, which will just reset the lens to the standard lens that was open, usually in RSIM 107 design. Current settings is used very often. That feature will allow you to set your control points wherever you like and run current settings. The software will align the contact lens to the cornea as best it can based upon those settings you put. For example, if you set the optic zone, intermediate curve and diameter at certain areas, run current settings, it will align the lens based upon those settings. Import will allow you to import a design. And then we have large diameter and semi-scleral lenses. Large diameter is going to default to a corneal scleral type design. So if I select that now, you'll see it'll change the diameter to 14.0. Um, it'll align centrally and give a little more edge lift to get over the limbus. You'll notice as we get to a large diameter lens, we have a little red indicator here. And if we hover over the diameter, we have edge angles, deviation, and lift angle. This helps us to design large diameter lenses. And then the final option in the drop-down is semi-scleral, which will default to a much larger design of 16.0. You'll notice the clearance view changed to 280. And when the semi-scleral design completes, you'll see we have corneal clearance, and 16.0 diameter lens, which we can now see the edge angles, deviations, and lift angles. You'll also note the diameter change to green. Anything over an 11.5 diameter, so 11.6 and above, is a large diameter lens, and it will change the diameter selector to a green color, just to let you know that you're in a large diameter lens. The next button is the Orders button. This is where you can place an order. When you select it, 
will prompt you, are you sure you want to order it? If you are, say yes. And first it opens up this set laboratory order screen again, just as it did with save. The only difference is when you hit accept here, it will actually place the order, whereas on the save screen, from this button, the same window opens, but when you hit accept, it will save the lens. And down here we have three toggle buttons, R, G, and F. R stands for RSIM, G for GSIM, and F for Freeform. Those are the three core design modes we can use when designing a wave contact lens. The fourth one is B, that's for minimal blending. And finally we have this drop down box with the S next to it for shape factor, and that will allow us to create a back aspheric optic zone. If that's set to zero, which is the default, we have an aspheric periphery to the lens with a spherical optic zone. We've just been through a, a pretty thorough walkthrough of the wave screen. At this point, I don't expect you to remember everything that we just went through and where all the controls are. Um, just know that they are there and continue through the training videos. And as you design more lenses, you'll feel more comfortable with the software itself. So in future videos, you're going to see some of the design principles, which are also very crucial. And then finally, how to design lenses. And once you get the design principles and the control points down, you'll see that it's really straightforward to design just about any style of contact lens you would like for any cornea.